Hey guys, welcome to my March 28th DVD update. I'm going to talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last month or so. As I always say, sorry these take a while, but I was on the Girls Gone Dead shoot for five days, and then before that, other was seeing MJ and other shoots, so, so I just didn't have a whole lot of time. So I didn't watch as much as I would have liked of what I got, but I've seen most of them, you know, at the theaters and stuff. Um, also, I'm up in the air if I'm going to ever change the name of this DVD collection update. You know, because since it's becoming more Blu-rays. The thing is, though, this is what these have been known for is the My DVD collection. So I don't think I'm going to change it. Even if it, <laughs> at one point it was all Blu-rays, I just put My DVD collection dot 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 Blu-ray. I don't know. You I mean, let me know what you guys think about that, what I should do. Cause, but, I mean, they sort of just have been, like, known for that. So I'm not really sure what I should do on that. Um, but I'll get to the, the DVDs I've gotten. And this one, I watched that show on the Food Network that they started called um, Dinner, no, Restaurant Impossible, with that Robert Irvine, you know, trying to fix up restaurants in two days that are a mess. Well, everyone, like, was telling me, like, on comments and stuff, and I mentioned it before, and on IMBD and everything, you should watch Kitchen Nightmare. And there's an American version and a British version. The American isn't on DVD, but I got the British version. And, you know, from what I heard, um, the Gordon Ramsay guy is real different than the American versions of these. He's screaming and mad, kind of playing more of a character. In these, he's more of a nice person, making, like, cracking jokes. But in this... It's him in Europe going to the restaurants that are a mess and dirty and have no customers and trying to fix them up. And it's a lot more interesting than you think. Like this specific show is put together almost like a like a actual like sitcom or something. Not exactly a sitcom, but like a show, not like some kind of documentary. It almost seems like like the office or something. That kind of vibe to it with him with all these issues and the stuff he's saying to these people like you know if they screw something up he's telling him to go fuck himself and so it's, it's just ridiculous the stuff he says I don't know it's really I like this a lot and I got the second series of it and I don't think he did any more of this one I don't know if they're if he did they're not out there's the American one of the same show but like I said I heard that it's more of him kind of putting on an act yelling because that's the way he's supposed to do it or something I just got this one yesterday, and this is his. And there's an American version of this too, called Hell's Kitchen. This is called the F word. It doesn't mean food; it means food. And I think I, I just started this, but I think it's him mentoring people about um, how to um, work in his restaurant, something like that. I, I it, lo it looked good though. I got it at Amoeba yesterday. Um, and when I was in Florida, I, I got I went to a pawn shop. And it was only a dollar. I'm like, I couldn't help but get it. And let me give you a fair warning about pawn shops. See, I never bought anything there. And, you know, you watch that Pawn Star show and stuff. You wouldn't think with buying something, you'd have to go through a whole bunch of paperwork. But just buying, you do. Not just selling. I've never sold anything there either. But I know they're always like, Let, let's, we got to fill out the paperwork. But with this, they actually have to, just to buy this, McGee and Me, which is like a really bad, you know, cheesy Mormon show. Um... I, I, you know, it's really cheesy. I don't think I have this one. But just to get it for one dollar, I had to fill out this whole, all this paperwork with like my um, license and ID and all this kind of shit just to get that. And so, just so you know, just buying something in a pawn shop, you have to go through a bunch of crap. Now, this, I was at this um, in Florida too. I think be right before I was in Jacksonville. And it was one of these really really cheesy, strange, gigantic outside flea markets, which I had never been to one like this. I mean, this thing must have gone a mile. And it was all this stuff strung out on, sh like, bed sheets, and it was, like, old tools and nails and just weird shit. But they had a lot of DVDs there. Um, one thing I saw, I didn't get it. Some of the other guy told me he should get it because I already had it. But they had the Wonder Years, which sells for, like, $100, though. They, they put out, if anyone remembers that, they put out the best of the Wonder Years, I think like 97 they put it out, and it just had the first and last episode, and there was a Christmas one too, but I just couldn't help but buy these things there. I got Shredder, which I've never watched this, and this one, I've mentioned this, and this is one, one of these most forgotten movies with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Skeet Ulrich, and I think people forgot about Skeet Ulrich too as well as this movie, and it's called Chill Factor. And I remember this, um, if anyone remembers this, there was, there was this, some kind of a bomb that was in, like, a freezer, and if the bomb got, un, like, too hot, it would blow up or something like that. So they had to go through all this to-do, like, we gotta keep it cold or it's gonna blow up! 
And <laughs> it was ridiculous. And, and I haven't seen it in a long time. And I was like, I was like, I gotta get this. But now on to the Blu-rays. And the first one was one that I said that I, I didn't think would ever hit Blu-ray. And they put two of them out on a doll pack, and it's like... There's no reason not to buy it. It's only $7.99, brand new, like used, it's probably like 5 And it's Ernest Goes to Camp and Ernest Goes to Jail, double feature, which I think are two of the best Ernest films. I think Scared Stupid, too. Hopefully, they put out more of these. I mean, I guess they're seeing how it sells. There can't be much money to lose, though, when they're selling it for so cheap. But um, they're in high definition, and I look through both of them. They're both in widescreen. The one thing that's a little bit different, though, is Ernest Goes to Camp was originally in the um, the bigger widescreen, uh, two by four, whatever. I, I never remember the specifics of that, but the widescreen that like Ghostbusters was in, and it wasn't in that. It was in just the regular widescreen. Ernest Goes to Jail is in widescreen as well. Yes, in full HD. Look, I mean, when you watch them like this, you're going to be very amazed. You've never seen Ernest in HD. And, you know, Ernest Goes to Camp, if you haven't seen that, it's a must-see 80s movie. It's Ernest going to, um, he works his summer camp as, like, a janitor. And there's a group of these delinquent kids that come into the camp, and they're screwing around with everything. And they, one, they knock the one counselor off the, um, boat dock, and he breaks his leg, and then no one else will watch him. They don't know what they're going to do with these kids. They think they have to send them back to the detention center. But then Ernest is like volunteers to do it, and he's real excited. But the kids are always screwing with him. And at the same time, the camp is trying to be bought out by a construction site that's trying to turn the land into a um, some condos or something like that. I never remember what they were building. But at the, at the same time, there's all this to-do going on with that. Um, and Ernest goes to jail. Is there's a guy that looks like Ernest, named I think I'm pretty sure it's Nash, and they try they switch places with Ernest when he goes to jury duty, and they make him come to the jail to look at the where the murder took place, something like that, and then they knock Ernest out, and Ernest ends up in jail, and the guy that looks like him ends up out living Ernest's life. I mean, it, it, these are silly but fun. I mean, if you have not seen these movies, if you've never seen an Ernest movie, I definitely recommend them for $8. These are the two best ones, I would say. So I would definitely pick them up. The next one, with these kind of movies, it's always hit or miss. And there's only $15.99 new, and it's The Switch. With um, Sorry about the lighting here. I'm, I'm trying to figure this lighting out. It's a bitch. I won't lie. In this room, it is a bitch. I think I need to strewn like, if I use the lights that are on the ceiling, it puts a shadow and all kinds of shit going on. So I'm I'm really trying it. It looks a little better than I think that it did last time, but sometimes it's hard to tell if you can see these well. But um, the switch, though, is Jason Bateman is really good friends with Jennifer Aniston's character in the film. And Jennifer Aniston, I think, is like 40 or something like that in the movie. And she hasn't had a husband. She really is getting worried she's not going to be able to have kids before it's too late. So she wants to get a sperm donor to have the kid with. And Jason Bateman ends up switching the sperm that because Jason, um, Jennifer Aniston doesn't want to go with his sperm. For some reason in the movie they're afraid to say sperm. They kept calling it like seed or some, some weird thing. Some odd term. But um, I don't know, maybe they thought it was going to be PG and they didn't want to be too questionable. But um, he ends up switching the specimen that um, was the guy from Hard Candy. You know, the hard, I don't know, it's a little weird to explain. But it's a very funny movie. I really liked it. The best character though was Jeff Goldblum. And the thing about Jeff Goldblum that I always think is kind of cool is every single movie Jeff Goldblum is Jeff Goldblum. And like you always know what you're going to get with him. He's always like, you know, that same Brundlefly kind of attitude, that same way of talking. I, I always like that. And this one, this is one that for some reason I thought that I had never seen. And for years I would look at it and go, should I watch this? Should I watch this? And I finally got it. And I, and I realized that I watched this years back, maybe when I was like 10, and it's the River, River Wild with Mel Streep and Kevin Bacon. And it's Mel Streep and her husband and son are going out on this rafting trip. Out, out. I don't know exactly where it was, but Kevin Bacon and John C. Riley and this other guy were these criminals that just robbed a, 
um, horse show or something like that, and they end up getting stranded out there, and they have they get they force Mel Streep's character to help them, and John C. Riley's in this like skinny and real serious, and I th I don't know it's it's a fun movie. The one thing about it that kind of slightly bugged me was for some reason. It was the music was cool, but then at points they did this thing with the music to try and make the movie seem bigger than it was by like w making it like crazy, like horns and trumpets and all over the place, trying just to make it seem bigger than it was or something. And I didn't care for that technique. I, they used to do that with movies a lot. If a movie really didn't have a whole t as much to it as the you know as it could have because of what the subject was, because, you know, this is river rafting, it's, they have to try and make it seem more intense, like, in, um, the Burt Reynolds one, totally blanking, no, Deliverance, that came across as more tense than this one did, this, they put this loud, crazy, like, um, orchestra music in there, which is more kind of like music you see in, like, an end-of-the-world movie, like Independence Day music, during river rafting craziness, I don't know, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, let me know, um, then I got Jackass, and it's the 3D, which is... I, I don't have a 3D TV, I'm not planning on getting it. But the 3D is only on the regular DVD, and it's the old red and um, blue 3D, which I can't watch that. For some reason, I get sick and my eyes cross when I watch that. But this was fun. I mean, if you've, if you've seen the Jackass movies, you know what this is. This is just more crazy stunts they're doing. I didn't think this one was... I topped the other ones. I thought it was just as good, but the other ones had a like the other ones kind of had a bit of a build up when they went kind of with smaller prank, like a bigger prank in the beginning, smaller stuff. And then near the end, they had real crazy stuff and big payoff. The payoff at the end of this one wasn't as exciting as some of the other ones with some of the stuff they did. I don't know. It just it didn't top anything. It is it's fun though, and I know they're going to be a 3.5, so I, we'll have to see what they put in that. Now this one I, they had real cheap at FYE used Urban Legends and I, I had the DVD and then I don't know I just wanted to get this it's, it's all right it's not as good as I thought the the first time I saw this was when I was in the, I think the sixth grade and so it was like one of the first R-rated movies I saw in the theaters I think Alien Resurrection was the first and this is one of the second ones. So I think I liked it a little bit more because it was like, oh, I've seen an R-rated movie back in 1998 or something. I don't know. But it's not as cool as I thought. And some of the acting in it was a little weird. Like this one scene with Tara Reid, like just this one line, like, please don't kill me. Like something about it was like, ugh. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't re remember that when I first saw it, how cheesy some of the stuff was. It, I mean, it's it's better than a lot of these things. It's on the same line as things like when they that period of time when they were making Scream. I know what you did last summer. I still know what you did last summer. Those set of movies, and you know, I'm very interested though in seeing Scream Four and seeing what they do with it. Um, like I said though, a couple times with the Scream thing is it's kind of funny though how people really hated Scream Three. They went on and on like I can't believe he did this. This is terrible. I hate this. And I remember the to do people were making about how much they disliked it that he made another one. So it's just kind of funny seeing how everyone's like wow Scream Four when they put down the last one like there was no tomorrow. Um, and one thing I will mention too is I did get The Walking Dead. My my dad was borrowing it, and you know I got it last week, so I haven't gotten to watch it. So that, don't I know there's gonna be a lot of questions. Where is The Walking Dead? I did get it. Don't worry, and I I will be watching it. Now this one I sort of I was watching this a bit on the airplane, and on the one flight I took when I was going for the Girls Gone Dead movie, they were playing. I think it was American Airlines. They were actually playing the movie from a VHS. They were playing Unstoppable from a VHS, and I, I wasn't paying too much attention, so I've got to rewatch this. But I just thought it was kind of funny. They were playing it off of a VHS. And it had like tracking lines in it, and they were like rewinding it. And I was thinking, man, I guess I know who's the only person that gets VHS tapes. And it was a TV cut, so it was cut up. I just feel like I don't think when you're on an airplane, you really want to watch a movie about like a disaster and stressful situations. It seems kind of a weird thing to put on. It's like putting Final Destination on when you're in the plane. Um, 
I don't know. And the next, the other one I got was the next three days. This is only ten dollars. This this was a pretty good movie, and you know I normally don't love Russell Crowe. I I liked him a lot in this, and this was when his wife got you know put in jail for a murder, and you don't know if she did or didn't commit it. So there's all these things with that, and he's trying to get her out of there, and he eventually. I, I don't I don't want to ruin details of it, but I thought this was really good, and I don't always like these kind of action kind of movies, but this one was good. The next one I got is Morning. Uh, no, sorry. That's the next one. Stand by Me, the um, 25th anniversary. It's the same age as me. Um, and I always thought this was a good movie. It's about the kids going on this quest to try and find this dead body. And, you know, people, I'm sure pretty much everyone's seen this. I really do need to watch the, with the commentary, the video commentary with Corey Feldman and, and then I think it's Rob Reiner and Will Whedon. And this one, like I, I already mentioned it, Morning Glory. And this is another one I got for cheap. I ordered it on Amazon used, and the person's like, oh, I accidentally listed it wrong, so it was the DVD. Do you still want it? I'm like, no. So I had to go through all this crap to get it canceled. But, um, I don't know. I like this. I like this movie. You know, so I know people are going to be like, you like this? You know, sometimes I like just positive movies. You know, just some kind of, you know, just positive okay movies, and it, the movie was um, with um, Rachel McAdams' character, and um, she works at her, this kind of failing um, TV station, and she ends up bringing in um, Harrison Ford's character, who's an old weather, old newsman who he's kind of bitter to be coming back, because he hasn't really done much with his life, and that's pretty much the main thing, is just trying to get him to play ga the game and, you know, deal with uh, everything. And this one, I, I do not, I had the HD DVD of it, I had DVD of it, I had the extended edition. I've always liked this movie. I just got it, it's only $10. And I know people have really, you know, shit on this a lot. I, I like this a lot, and I've always liked this. And it's Waterworld, and I know people like Waterworld. I don't know, some people have done these weird expressions, and some people love this movie. So it's kind of like a mix. But, you know, if you haven't seen Waterworld, it's, you know, the whole world... Um, has become flooded, the entire world, and the survivors and stuff, and Kevin Costner is one of these survivors that's sort of living on this really cool boat that he built. It's basically, ba basically it's Mad Max on water, the, like Beyond Thunderdome movie, just on water. And it's pretty much the same idea, and they're trying to get to dry land. It's, it's, it's very, very cool, though, and, you know, and it's definitely, I would say, worth watching. And some of the ones I got at pre-played... No, no, not pre-played at um, Movie Stop, which I really hope they put out in California at some point. They put it in Maryland right before I left, so when I was back visiting, I got these. I got Unbreakable, which is one of the M. Night Shyamalan movies that I think is one of the best ones. Um, and it's the one with Bruce Willis has the, uh, the ability to... Um, for some reason, I'm totally blanking on it, so I'm not going to bother trying to explain it. I haven't watched it in a long time. Um, but Pleasantville, I got there on the used one for only $9. I think, I think the thing is, it says used, but it's not, not open. I don't know. But um, Pleasantville, which is a, like a must-see if you haven't seen it. It's Tom McGuire and Reese Witherspoon that get transferred put it into the TV, into this old Leave it to Beaver type show. And they go in there and change things and it, you know, it, it's it's such a cool thing. Con the whole concept is very cool. It's basically bringing new ideas into this world with these kind of closed-minded people in the show. I don't know, it's a very cool concept. And like I said, I really wish I got to watch more of this stuff, but I've only been home a period of maybe a week and a half in the last month, like, yeah, about last month or so, about a week and a half that I've actually been home in the house, so I haven't really gotten to watch as much. It will it, it'll slow down a little bit, then gets busier and stuff coming up film-wise, but um, it, I'm happy to be doing the film stuff, so I, if, it, if it becomes between watching something and, you know, doing something and making money, I'll take that. Um, but, so I'm, I'm sorry, there's been delays, but I got The Cable Guy, which, like I said, I really wish I got to watch some of this stuff. I'm going to probably be watching most of it, like, out in the next week. Um, but, you know, this is the good one. This is, um, I think I saw somewhere that this was supposed to be where they wanted Chris Farley for it. So I remembered reading that at some point. Um, but it's Matthew Broadwick gets cable, and this weird Jim Carrey character who's a cable guy comes, and he's very stalkerish and won't leave him alone, is giving him free things. He basically just becomes like stalking his whole life. Very cool movie. Very weird. Ben Stiller directed it. 
And the other one I just got, which I was hoping to have watched, is Skyline. Um, and I heard real mixed things with this, but it was cheap and I really wanted to watch it. Like I said, guys, I'm really sorry for not getting to watch as much stuff as I would have liked. I'm, I'm doing my best. Like I, like I said, when I'm not home, I can't really watch stuff. I, I have watched some things off of Netflix, like some TV things. Um, I pretty much all I got to watch was that Gordon Ramsay thing. Um, I was going to review, you know, I got started watching the Hereafter movie. That's just a downbeat, depressing thing. Didn't didn't really like that. Um, anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing. Um, there should be a new one of these, uh, um, I would say, in probably three weeks or so, I, I hope. Um, I'm going to do something coming up. and But I'm not going to be away as much coming up. So I should be able to... Um, do this much faster. I just don't know how much stuff is coming out. So the main th reason why, too, there's delays is not just because um, of being away and stuff. It's because I try and have enough stuff to talk about. Because if I only had, like, ten things, it might not be as interesting since you guys waited a while to see them. That's the main main reason, is because, like, it's just, there's certain months when there's just not a ton of stuff that comes out. And I don't I don't want to just go and buy a bunch of old crap just to buy something. You know what I mean? Just That's the main thing. As I said, thanks a lot for watching for, and for subscribing. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.